Hello there, 21st of March 2022. Greetings from Rwanda's capital Kigali. This is what makes our top stories tonight. The National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda has announced that the country's gross domestic product increased by 10.9% in 2021 compared to the previous year. The fourth Rwanda Endoscopy Intervention Week and medical experts have urged people to go for checkups early in order to catch our complications before they become too severe to treat. Economic observers that uh, say that measures including reducing the tax on uh, basic commodities and increasing private sector lending can help uh, the public to cope with the increase in market prices and support the economic recovery fund in tackling with the economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. A very good evening to you and welcome to Rwanda Television News. My name is Sam Kalisa. To begin of our tonight's edition, let us inform you that this afternoon at Rugiro Village, President Paul Kagame received the outgoing Chinese ambassador to Rwanda, Rao Hongwei, for a farewell meeting as he ends his tour of duty to Rwanda. Ambassador Rao Hongwei has been representing China to Rwanda since April 2017 after he presented his credentials to President Paul Kagame with residence in Kigali. At the time, Ambassador Rao Hongwei praised Rwanda Rwanda's uh, progress in rebuilding uh, the country and reconciling and that his country, China, has closed bilateral ties with Rwanda. Recently, the uh, People's Republic of China and the Republic of Rwanda celebrated the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between both countries. And as we move ahead to other matters, the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda has announced that the country's gross domestic product increased by 10.9% in 2021 compared to the previous year. We do have the story with Serge Nhori. During a press conference on Monday, the Director General of the Institute noted that the fourth quarter of 2021 saw Rwanda's GDP increase by 10.3%, 10.1% during the third a massive 20.6% during the second and 3.5% in the first. By the end of uh, 2021, most sectors had recovered uh, beyond uh, their levels uh, during uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, in 2019. Apart from a few sectors, uh, for example, export crops have not yet recovered uh, beyond their pre-COVID uh, levels. Mining also, hotels and restaurants. Transport also has not yet recovered uh, beyond its pre-COVID-19 level. And uh, some support services that mainly rely uh, on tourism uh, activities. It was also pointed out that events currently happening elsewhere around the world cannot be expected not to affect Rwanda's economy. In addition to COVID impact, now we, we can anticipate an additional impact of uh, the Ukraine-Russia war in different ways. One is the implication on uh, inflation. The prices are going to be uh, to increase uh, drastically, starting from fuel and the oil energy products. Some commodities also, uh, including uh, cereals like wheat uh, or cooking oil, sugar and many, many others. And this will be translate to general increase of prices. We are following closely uh, the, the trends. We are also working with the private sector to, to get signals of, of any uh, problem related to value chains, the imports, Whereas also we try to identify some other uh, markets where we can uh, source our essential goods. Last year, the agricultural sector grew by 6%, contributing 24% to Rwanda's gross domestic product. This despite cash crops reducing by 1% because of reducing coffee yields, though tea helped by increasing by 7%, matching the increase in food crops. The industrial sector increased by 13%, contributing 20% to the GDP, while the service sector went up by 12%, contributing the most to Rwanda's GDP at 48%. 
Thank you very much, Serge, for the report. And as we move ahead, the fourth Rwanda Endoscopy Intervention Week and medical experts have urged people to go for checkups early in order to catch uh, complications before they become too severe to treat. The endoscopic procedures are performed by a team of overseas and local gastroenterologist experts in digestive disorders and liver diseases. We have the report with Sidi Patel. The doctors who treat gastrointestinal diseases say that most of them who are suffering from gastrointestinal problems are most of the time late to receive the treatment and the endoscopy might solve the infection. The fourth Rwanda Endoscopy Intervention Week has been sponsored by various universities and hospitals under the umbrella of Rwanda Society for Endoscopy. The first one was conducted in the year 2017. In this week, many activities are conducted where international visitors come up from across the globe for teaching, presentations, research and study. Nowadays, due to advancement in awareness, people are getting to know about the endoscopic procedure and getting the treatment needed. A patient who had undergone endoscopy briefs us about how simple and quick it was without any pain. I was have inflammation. When I met with the doctor, he gave me the medicine and my pain is finished. I was calm. I tell him to make me the, uh, the surgery. And he tell me, no need of surgery. You can take the medicine, the problem is finished. Dr. Eric Rutaganda, who specializes in internal medicine, is also the head of the endoscopy unit in Shikh Hospital in Kigali City. He briefs us about where the endoscopy is done and how. We started the clinical activities, including uh, consultations for uh, patients with upper gastrointestinal systems. And we have uh, also uh, endoscopies on ground and colonoscopies. Uh, so that you can decrease the number of uh, patients who are on waiting list. Some are done here in Sashika, others are done at Butare, Sashibe, others are done in Gisenyi, even at King Faisal. Uh, during this week, we'll be having some specialized uh, investigations or procedures, uh, mainly the endoscopic ultrasound. It's the way you are entering the esophagus and the stomach, then you can look at the structures beyond the tract, the intestinal tract. This is written done at King Faisal, but uh, during this week, uh, we'll be having a majority of patients at King Faisal. Men will be doing uh, uh, ERCPs. ERCPs it's, uh, it's uh, a way of you, you go in the gastrointestinal tract, then enter down the intestine, then you can explore the biliary tree, trees or biliary duct. Some patients do have stones, uh, stones from uh, cholesterol, those who are taking a lot of alcohol. Then we can remove those stones without operating on them. Uh, so we are planning to have uh, ERCPs on Wednesday and Thursday and so far we've recorded eight patients who need ERCPs. There are approximately 300 patients on the waiting list for endoscopy and colonoscopy where they are able to do 10 to 15 endoscopies and 3 to 4 colonoscopies on a daily basis. The materials are enough to treat the patients but still the number of patients are in high ratio to get treated. Like a... Uh, Ten years ago, here in Sashka, we were using what we call uh, ocular uh, endoscopy. The physician has to go with his own eye, go in. But nowadays, you have a screen, you can do uh, 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 teaching students on the, on the same monitor, which is good. So when it comes to technology, uh, what we do have uh, uh, today uh, in Sashika, uh, despite of having this videoscope, uh, we can share the images with patients, which is good. Uh, or we can share the images with uh, other institutions. Like if I have a new finding which I've never seen because probably my experience is still low in endoscopy, I can share with another physician remotely in USA. That's one. Another good thing, uh, what we are using, we have what we call chromo endoscope. It's the way I can see a lesion. Then I took some pieces of biopsies, sent them to the lab to do confirmation. And when I'm taking my biopsies, those small pieces to, to know what is going on, uh, I can be sure that I'm, I'm taking the biopsy on the right lesion. That's one of the advancement. Endoscopic retrograde choranjiopancreatography. It's a, it's a way that now he can only spend one day in the hospital, then you get everything done on him. Uh, another new technology we have here is what you call fibroscan. Fibroscan is a, it's a scan. We, you don't need to go through the scan. It's, a, it's a like a, we do a, a ultrasound on a, on a pregnant woman. Mm -hmm. So we do a, a fibroscan deliver of someone. Like if you have hepatitis B or hepatitis C, we can, we can target the good time of certain medications and the, the, the real dose for you. Because some patients, they may, they, they may not uh, be on a real treatment because the ultrasound per C, it can't give you the exact uh, condition of the liver. 
that is, uh, the fibro can, fibro scan is, is simple. A, nurse can, a trained nurse can use it. You don't need a physician, and the patient they don't have to spend a lot of time at the hospital for fibro scan. As the ulcers or the colitic gastritis, it's just pain, pain in the stomach, pain in the belly. But some patients they don't have, they don't have pain. They vomited the blood at the first time. Then when you go there, you find ulcers. Uh, the, the second, uh, the second one is uh, cancers. Yeah, we have a lot of cancers, being esophagus, being in the stomach, and being the colon. And also precancerous lesions, uh, not yet the cancer, but the lesions which uh, probably in one year or five years to come will turn into cancers. And we do what we call screening, uh, screening colonoscopy. Uh, when you are at the age of 50, uh, uh, it's recommended that you come for colonoscopy so that you detect a colon cancer early because it's a curable condition. Uh, and if you have a family history of cancer, either being gastrointestinal, uh, you come for, for uh, screening, then you can do endoscopy on you. People should get consulted if any of these symptoms arises like anemia, heart palpitations, blood in the feces, heartburn, upper abdomen pain, unexplained weight loss. The doctors encourage people to consult as early as possible because they could die from the conditions that could be treated. Siddhi Patel, RTV News. And as we move ahead to economic matters, economic observers say that measures including reducing the tax on basic commodities and increasing private sector lending can help the public cope with the increase in market prices and support the Economic Recovery Fund in tackling the economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. You do have more. In 2020, the government of Rwanda established an economic recovery fund and initially invested 100 billion Rwandan francs to help the country's economy that had been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects. Robert Wafakurera, the chairperson of the Rwanda Private Sector Federation, noted that the fund had helped the private sector, especially those in the tourism and hospitality sectors, adding that there is still a number of those who need to be helped. It helped a lot. Out of the 100 billion, 50 million was given to the hospitality sector and 50 million was directed to working capital and supporting small businesses. So adding 100 to the circulation is a huge move. However, 100 billion is not enough. We expected the pandemic to end sooner, but it took longer. So more people need to be helped. The Rwandan government recently announced that it will increase its investment in the Economic Recovery Fund to more than three times the original amount. Uh, 100 billion was added to help the sector and later we added another 150 billion to help those that invest in activities that can help to boost the economy also supporting the expansion of already existing businesses like industries. So the fund will be increased from 100 billion to 300 billion. This will help to fight the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to the economic recovery fund, other measures include allowing all sectors of the economy to operate on a full-time basis, which is expected to help the economy recover faster. These measures alone, however, are not enough due to the rise in prices of some of the key commodities on the market and therefore the government should make sacrifices including easing taxes. This according to some local leaders. Mm -hmm. When people are facing such tough times, taxes should be eased as well because that helps to maintain affordable prices on the market. Economic analysts say that the rise in prices for some of the products on the international market has had an impact on the Rwandan market as well, and that easing taxes is not the only solution to the issue and should be done with care. Taxes are all about percentages, so prices increased right from where commodities are imported from. So we need to be careful when we say that taxes need to be reduced. Many of the Rwandans, for example, use cooking oil, but only a few consume alcohol. So how about adding 5% taxation on alcohol and then reducing 50% taxation on cooking oil, since it is a basic commodity. However, figures from the National Institute of Statistics of Rwanda show confidence in the country's economic recovery, because last year Rwanda's GDP grew by 10.9%, after it shrunk by 3.4% in 2020.
The Minister of Local Government, Gatawazi Jean-Marie Vianney, ended his visit to Ngorore Road District on Monday, where he visited terracing activities in Kavumu sector. He called on the authorities to work together to solve the problem of potato seeds grown in the area as farmers still get seeds from Musanze District. 50 hectares of land in Rujeshi Cell in Kavumu sector have been covered with terraces where farmers plant maize and potatoes. They say with two years of cultivating, terraces have led to an increase in production. Before I used to harvest 700 kilograms, but currently I harvest 1.6 tons. It will help me because I am planning to buy domestic animals that can be helping me to get fertilizers. Farmers say terracing has been effective in erosion control. These terraces helped us a lot because there used to be constant erosion, but currently waterways have been established and that has reduced conflicts resulting from soil erosion. Terraces were among the activities visited by Minister Gatabazi on the second day of his visit to Ngororero district. In Rujeshi cell, potato farmers pointed out that despite their progress, owing to the terraces that helped them to revitalize agriculture, they still have a problem of potato seeds that they still get from Musanze district. Minister Gatabazi Jamarivian noted that relevant authorities are going to work together to solve this problem, but a lasting solution will be to training farmers to multiply potato seeds. We agreed with RAB to partner with different authorities to establish storages and train residents on how to multiply seeds and helping them to get seeds before they start multiplying for themselves. But we prioritize multiplying them because that is when they will get more profits. The six out of 13 sectors in Gororero district are the ones that grow potatoes most on an area of 6,000 hectares per season with two tons of potato seeds needed per hectare. Mugabo for the report, and as we move ahead, the UN resident coordinator for Rwanda has praised RDF peacekeepers, saying they perform exceptionally while on missions around the world. Ford Ndiaye made the comments while at the Rwanda Peace Academy on Monday, where two weeks of training have begun for 25 RDF officers. After they complete the training, the 25 will be able to train other officers uh, on the force, something of great significance. It is important to hold this because peace is really at the cornerstone of the UN. UN has been set up in 1945 uh, to really prevent peace, uphold the values and principles that would help humanity live uh, without any wars. And the Security Council role is really all about peace and international security. The second is the importance that Rwanda is playing. Rwanda is the fourth top troop contributors to the UN peacekeeping forces. And we really want to thank the government of Rwanda and uh, its leadership for upholding that. And last point is that uh, it is really an important training because it is a training of trainers and we want to thank the Rwanda Peace Academy for hosting that and thank also the British government through uh, the British Peace and Security team that will support this training and our de Department of Peace Operation for also bringing such a strong team to support that. RDF peacekeepers have been known to go far and beyond to fulfill their responsibilities while serving in other countries. Rwandan troop is uh, are really uh, not only top contributors, but as I mentioned in my statement, upholding the principle and values. Their behavior is really commendable, and the UN commended and appraised really the um, value and the principle of Rwandan troops. So we really are very proud of the behaviors of Rwandan troops in all the theater of operation.
they have been deployed. So that's something that UN uh, really praised about the Rwandan troops uh, in all the operations. The training was organized by the Rwanda Peace Academy in collaboration with the British a Support Team for Africa. On behalf of the entire news production team that made it happen, thank you very much for staying with us. My name is Sam Kalisa. Stay safe and have a fruitful week ahead. Goodbye.